Over the last few weeks, councils across the UK have been using cones, crowd barriers and planters like these to make our streets safer for cycling and walking. And doing it quickly has meant an awful lot of learning on the hoof and mistakes have been made, but the beauty about temporary means we can just pick up those cones and barriers and rejig it until we get it right. And we have to remember, of course, just why we're doing all this. With public transport still operating at around a third of pre-COVID levels, we simply have to find another way of helping those without a car to move around safely. Here in Greater Manchester, that's over 200,000 journeys a day, all of whom have a right to travel to work, shops and schools without putting themselves at risk. In Birmingham, one of the early adopters of those measures, there's been a six-fold increase in people travelling to work by bike. Leicester has created 11 miles of safe routes in just 10 weeks and seen cycling levels double. And if it's not working where you live, we can just rip it all out and go back to the old normal. But if it is, and we like what we've created, we can swap out those cones for permanent bollards, keep the planters so kids can play in the streets, and transform parking bays with tables for cafes and bars. Over the coming weeks, you're going to be hearing a lot from NIMBYs warning of gridlock hell and waving their petitions to have the lanes torn out. But new research last week showed that for every one of them, there are over six of us saying yes to better health, yes to cleaner air, and yes to keeping public transport free for those who really need it. So let's make sure it's the voice of the YIMBYs that's heard loud and clear and urge our councils and councillors to keep their nerve and give us all a real chance at choosing cycling.